This is Inside Space Flight, a special edition celebrating Air Force Week 2010. In this segment, we will continue our tour of the Morrell Operations Center, also known as the Range Operations Control Center, at, pa at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. This is the nerve center of all of the operations that go on at Cape Canaveral relating to launches, security, uh, weather and um, everything else that takes place during a launch. So here it goes with the remainder of our tour of the rock. Please continue to take pictures. I'll talk while you all are looking out here. This is MCR number two. It's our mission control room. Uh, on day of launch, this is where uh, the operations for the range is going on. Uh, we've got also, the launch group also has operations center, but uh, this is where we have our range operations going on. Um, typically, uh, this room would be filled. Um, like I said, we're just we're conducting just an internal exercise for the range. Prior to uh, every op, we like to get our range team together to include the wing commander and our ops group commander. And we get together and we, we go through a simulated count. We've got folks uh, whose assignment, uh, the civilians in this back row, they'll, they'll make inputs as far as, you know, anomalies or, or, uh, or weather coming in and see how the crew reacts to that. Um, again, we are conducting a cab ice, uh, cab meeting that it contains the commander's advisory board. Um, and, and when we go out, you can actually, if you look back into where these guys are uh, working, you'll see a room back here that's glassed in, and that's where the cab is. And that's where the space when commander sits and, and makes the final uh, uh, go, no-go decision. Um, again, normally this room is pretty full of folks, as you can imagine, on day of launch. Uh, over here on the right-hand side, this is predominantly where our safety is. Our safety folks are all here on day of launch to make sure that we're conducting safe operations. The back row here is typically where our range operators are. Um, these folks, uh, you know, manage the count. They manage what's going on with instrumentation. They up-channel that information to the wing commander. They up-channel and cross-feed that information to the, uh, the launch agency. And so that's kind of where all that happens in the back row here. Um, and then the rest of the seats are filled in by folks that, again, important to the launch. Um, and, they, uh, and, and they use our operation center. And as you can see, typically we have the screens up. Since this is an exercise, there's really nothing to monitor. Uh, but it looks like they're bringing up a picture of where SDS-133 is at now. Uh, and it looks like there's a rainbow behind it, so that's a pretty cool shot. Um, again, typically uh, on the left screen, we'll have our weather, go, uh, weather sh uh, information. There you go right there. It's like you know what I'm talking about. Look at that. Um, and we use that day of launch, we do about four or five weather briefings to the commander, to the team for weather assessment. Again, um, weather is one of our biggest concerns out here. Um, and, and, you know, there's nothing we can do about weather, but we, we try to uh, optimize the launch window. Typically, a launch window can be anywhere from uh, instantaneous, meaning you have one second, you've got a launch on the, uh, on the exact minute. It could be a 10-minute window. Typically, our shuttles are 10-minute windows, and we typically aim for the middle. Or you can have a four- to six-hour window. Um, so you can imagine um, our RCO, which is our range control officer, uh, he or she will be in here six hours prior to launch. You, you know, worst case, or, you know, a six-hour window, so they're in uh, working for 12 hours uh, uh, if they decide to use the entire launch window. And what you don't realize is, again, we talked about the eastern range, 15 million square miles. We have a trajectory where we launch, again, defined on day of launch. And when you have a four or six hour window, there's a lot of coordination that has to uh, take place. And that includes our civilian folks. It includes our FAA. It includes our uh, air traffic controllers. Because we block out that airspace uh, for the duration of the window until the vehicle is launched. So if it's a six-hour window, there's the potential to block out that airspace uh, for six hours, which causes a lot of havoc for our, for our airliners. But we do let them know that, 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 that it's coming up, so they, they are aware of that. 
or Fernandez. Yes. Um, about how many people work here, both civilian and Air Force? Day-to-day, uh, -day it's about two to 300 folks. Um, and that includes, again, weather, that includes ROPS, and that includes our, our CSR contractors. On day of launch, it could be anywhere from three to 400 folks in here. Um, so, again, not everyone's in this room. Uh, if if uh, a couple of those offices, closed doors we uh, passed, those are our system controllers. So, for example, in telemetry, we talked about telemetry assets being spread across uh, the eastern range. That data gets fed back in, into the MOF, and we've got folks working back here who, who are uh, making sure that data is getting sent out to who needs it, really our, our flight control officers. So quite a few folks have worked in here during day of launch. Yeah, so you make a great contribution to the local economy because after the shuttle kind of dials down, you guys are going to still be doing your thing. Oh, yes, definitely. The, the, the launch mission will not go away from here. Um, as far as uh, DOD launches, civilian launches, etc. Um, so yes, the range portion will definitely be here for uh, yeah. FRC, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, and again, we do, uh, for, for the ROPS at least, uh, you know, for our mission here, we do have a total force uh, concept. Uh, the Florida Air National Guard, uh, we've got five or six folks who are integrated into our squadron who work with us day to day. Uh, we don't have any reserves at this time, but again, civilian, we have guard, and we have active duty work in them uh, day to day, and on missions. So, What we'll do now is we'll actually go out to the MCR. I didn't want to really talk out there, because again, they're working their ops, um, and they didn't need to hear my voice. Um, but we can go out there for a little bit, we'll take some pictures, and we'll walk across and go into uh, what's, what's called our, uh, our SCO room, or our, our surveillance control room. So we can go ahead and head out and go down. on day of launch, and I know you guys hear a lot about our uh, problems with boats and planes and all that kind of things that we have offshore. We have a very popular area to go fishing and to be able to fly off offshore here. And you can see the screens off to the side behind you. There's the areas that we're going to be surveying for this upcoming shuttle launch that we have. There's some uh, blue bubbles that are there and red bubbles. Those are our safety contours. Our safety department has told us what areas uh, so many vessels can be in. And we're uh, projecting where boat targets will be and if we need to help purge those areas. We have two Black Hawk helicopters that take off out of Patrick Air Force Base. They both belong to the reserve squadron there. And they help us for all of our launches to be able to help clear the areas. They'll go out and go back and forth and they'll talk to these folks over here on the side, the sea surveillance officers. And they'll report any targets that we can't see on radar and we'll plot them there to see if they're going to be a problem at T0 or not. At the same time, we're also watching for aircraft offshore. Um, our folks over here on the other side are aerospace control officers, and we'll have some air traffic controllers sitting here. They're going to help us monitor and take care of and manage our aircraft that we have, our mission support aircraft, but then also any other target aircraft that may meander into the area, and we're going to try and keep all of that clear. In the case of the boats, though, if um, those people just uh, tell the helicopters to go fishing somewhere else that day, uh, we have our friends the United States Coast Guard. They sit on the very end down there. They're here for every launch, and they're extremely helpful to be able to clear people out of the way. Uh, they'll 
They have two, normally two boats right on the shoreline to be able to keep people clear of the launch pads and our coastline. But then they'll also go and take care of people that are offshore that are in sight of the safety areas. So again, uh, we're trying to be as proactive as possible and clear people out. We're clearing people out sometimes three hours prior to the launch offshore. And then we're concerned about aircraft, of course, a little bit later. But those are the kinds of things that we're managing. Let me show you just a little bit um, on our uh, on our maps that are up here on the screens. You can get an idea of how many aircraft are flying right now. This is a real world, uh, you can see the people over Daytona, Orlando, coming up out of Miami on the other side of the state. And as I close in, and you can see our areas that we're concerned about right along the Cape here. There's our launch pads. Just a, a little bit fewer aircraft because we have restricted airspace that's active all the time. But that restricted airspace grows on launch day, and we'll clear even more aircraft out. We have a scheduling department down the hall. They're very good at coordinating with the FAA, being able to close off this area. They sent out notice to airmen. We also, through the scheduling department, sent out a notice to mariners to let them know that we would prefer for them not to be in this area on launch day. Most cases, everybody complies very nicely. They understand what we're trying to do here. We're trying to keep them safe. And we're trying to get the missile to be as safe as possible. And that's, that's our whole priority here is, is safety, is to make sure the public is safe on the day of launch. However, we do have some people like Billy Bob. He's just on the fish. He doesn't want to go anywhere. And that's our day. That's what makes it um, fun for us out here. Most of the container ships, the cruise lines, uh, whoever else may be playing out of the port, those guys are very, very good about complying with what we need. Um, if Billy Bob's not fishing that day, he's flying into Cessna and circles a little too close to us. Again, that's another concern that we've got because he hasn't filed a flight plan, and we don't know exactly where he's going to go. So that's when we start enforcing some of our restricted area rules that we have for that person. And he'll get contacted very quickly from somebody, an air traffic controller, and he'll purge out of the area as well. So it is a, it's, um, we kind of hope to be bored in this area on day of launch. Um, that's not always the case. And we, uh, we're getting better and better about getting the information out to people prior to the launch. We even have people, if we're not working in here on day of launch, we're at the boat docks over here at the marina, handing out pieces of paper telling people, please don't be in this area from this time to this time. So we're getting the word out as much as we can. So that's the surveillance room. Any questions about the surveillance room at all? What was the most uh, exciting day in terms of aircraft and boats? Uh, recently, it was during our Ares 1 launch that we had. The shuttles are not so bad because we just have to keep the area clear for a few minutes at a time. For the Ares launch, we had to keep the area clear for four hours. We had a container ship that was coming through. We tried to explain to that container ship what we were doing. Again, a lot of commercial traffic going off. The person didn't speak the best of English. Uh, he spoke German. As a matter of fact, our Coast Guard individual we had here spoke German with his grandmother on occasion. And he got in, uh, was able to uh, tell the uh, boat vessel what we needed them to do. And in the end, uh, one of our helicopters called us back and said, well, I'm not sure if you ordered a beer or asked them to stop, but they did. So uh, it was a good day. Uh, those are the kinds of things that we have. In that case, we had the boat clear with, uh, with one minute to spare. And that can be a little scary for us in here. So we're on pins and needles. We're trying to make sure that the area can be clear so we can communicate to everybody that we may need to hold the launch to get this person clear. Do the solid rocket boosters drop in that red center or is that a separate They're area? a little bit further offshore. It matters what type of vehicle it is, but in the case of the shuttle, <laughs> it's, um, it's almost a couple hundred miles down range that they're splashing it. And in the case of the shuttle also, we have um, a Coast Guard Falcon jet that will go out there and clear that area, and it'll look like just little rings that are out there, little waves. Those are, uh, again, more challenges that we have, more area that we have to clear, more surface that we have to clear out. Very, very often when we have our expendable launches, our helos will be coming in for the end of the day and they'll see a target at the last second. And we're going to try and contact them as quick as possible, see what their speed and heading is, where they're going to be at launch time, and we're going to clear them out. Anything else? And what is your name, please? Uh, this, I'm Master Sergeant Greg Jones, and I work with the range here. As I mentioned earlier, we are in total force uh, here at this wing. So right now for this exercise and for this op, you'll see, just, just by example, we've got it. Master Sergeant Jones, Florida Air National Guard, who's been here for quite some time. In the back corner, we've got uh, two active duty NCOs, and we've had two of our ROP civilians working uh, the sea surveillance aspect. So, again, we had mentioned uh, total force integration. 
and, and just for this op and, and many ops, we, we've got that going on in this room. So uh, we, we just we don't just talk about it; we actually we, we live it and we do it. So. Um,